You are listening to a free version of the Majority Report with Sam Steeter. To support the show and get another 15 minutes of daily program, go to majority.fm, please. The Majority Report with With Sam Sam Steeter. It is Friday, July 7th, 2017. My name is Sam Steeter. This is the four-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. It's Casual Friday, folks. And as we do on most Casual Fridays, Cliff Schechter will saunter onto the program. And then, following Cliff Schechter... We will get the D-Man report from the A-Man, Andy Kindler himself. Also on the program today, in Hamburg, Germany, Trump genuflex. Meanwhile, in the U.S., Mitch McConnell in retreat? That's a question mark. The U.S. ethics chief, however, definitely resigns. And the Muslim travel ban about to be put into effect. Judge in Hawaii allows for no further exemptions. France announces that it will ban all gas vehicles by 2040. Meanwhile, Volvo to go mostly electric by 2019. And somebody is shopping Russian rat fark documents. It's according to Rachel Maddow. And the documents are sort of fascinating. The timeline is very odd. And lastly, the Republicans investing in healthcare stocks on the verge of repeal and doing quite well. Uh, they're so smart. So smart when it comes to the things about the stock market. All this and more on today's Majority Report program, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, joining me in studio today, Michael Brooks, Matt Leck, Kelly Carey. As we wait for a uh, another Friday to come and go, ladies and gentlemen, in the era of Donald Trump. Uh, he's in, he's in Germany now for the G20, um, summit, the world's leaders, of course, completely focused on John Podesta and, uh, the DNC servers, as everyone would expect one would be if one was totally sane and also, not trying to run or hide from some other narrative. Oh, sorry. I'm just thinking of uh, she's like translator, you know, like the translators have like very formal English and they're just like, also President Xi raises that he's very concerned that John Podesta (laughs) did not release (laughs) transcript to FBI and CIA. What does Clinton campaign have to hide? And are they still trying to undermine you with CNN in a very horrible and sad display that is sick and ruining your presidency. President Xi would like to know this. The, the question is, though, I mean, you're conflating a lot of different things, Michael, but the question is, is does, the, does the agenda of the G20 summit look more or less like, number one, DNC servers, number two, CNN, number three, NBC, number four, Katie Turr, number five... President Xi also said Katie Turr is a very hateful and so-called journalist. <laughs> fake journalist. She is a fake journalist. Actually, this is the best, best strategy for everybody moving forward. You just have a meeting with him. We've got a lot to get to, things I want you to do on North Korea. First, before we get to North Korea, President Xi would like to say CNN is sick and disgusting. <laughs> Russia, big nothing burger. All right, you guys do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Can we release a joint communique on that? Do you guys want our, our aircraft carriers? Yeah, would you guys like... You know, maybe we could solve the Gulf uh, crisis. Would you guys just like our base in, in gutter or whatever it is? That could be great. 
All I need is one big hotel. <laughs> just so, like so Trump is there, and uh, there's images now of him shaking hands with, um, with um, uh, Vladimir Putin. And, of course, look, it is the thing, uh, the, the, the quintessential, um, I think, reality of living in the Trump era is that you are sucked in to a vortex of the most meaningless stuff suddenly having to have meaning. And the idea that there would be a nation so wrapped in attention as to the times where they shake hands uh, is just, this country, we didn't start off on such a pinnacle, I think, if we really were to look at this with clear eyes. But we, from wherever our baseline was, Eight months ago, we have dropped so significantly, uh, like the entire country has become more dumb, more petty, and those are actually probably the, the better attributes that have happened over the past seven months. It gets worse from there. But here is images of Donald Trump sort of awkwardly shaking uh, Vladimir Putin's ha uh, hand, in fact, his whole arm, doing the old, I'm, I'm hugging you, I'm almost bro-hugging you by grabbing your elbow. And then there's another one where he seems to be not only tapping uh, Putin on the back, but rubbing his back. And Putin sort of is having a little... Now, maybe uh, Trump is psyching Putin. I have no idea. I don't yeah. even know what... Yeah. Rel I mean, who knows? I, but, have, I have killed men for touching me less. He's playing maybe three please, step away. Please, That's what please, he's doing right now. Please just don't release the PJ. Please, I'm begging you. Please. All right, go ahead. Um, there he is. There you go. Oh, there okay. you go. Yeah. Oh, there you Take go. Take a moment to look. Oh. Yep, there you go. They all shook hands. This, yes. And there's the right. back rub. Ooh. That's Ron the Brown weird part. Somewhere Allison Camerata is begging for a body language expert. Yeah. There you go. Mm. So he gave him the well, shake. And there you go. I mean, there it is. And <laughs> what is that? What is, you got to talk into the microphone. His body's disconnected from his whole, like his arm is like in the distance, but he's still. There was a quality that to is that. so of, physically bizarre. Um, uh, you know, I can only speak for myself, but being in like fifth or sixth grade and, you know, having a girlfriend and, you know, the big uh, sort of uh, thing. Having is like, a stable mate. Right. Like <laughs> just sort of like putting your arm uncomfortably on their outside shoulder or something like just sort of not sure what happens next. It's very space. Very, very <laughs> uncomfortable for everybody involved. Um, but uh, uh, we're going to go uh, talk to Cliff Schechter about uh, what's happening in terms of health care. This is, uh, this is going to start to heat up in the next couple of days when we return after the weekend. Uh, and uh, a couple other stories I've noticed that indicate there's some concern within the Democratic Party that um, maybe the left is a little bit out of ahead of where the rest of the party should be relative to 2018 and even 2020. Uh, just a reminder, however, that PodcastAwards.com has opened up for nominations. You can go to PodcastAwards.com and nominate this program for Best News in Politics and People's Choice. We would be a five-time award winner. And then I think we would just probably all resign and go home. So um, there you go. We, we are done. Five times and out. But uh, head over there and nominate us. Also, if you enjoy this program and would like to support it in some fashion, become a member today. You can join the Majority Report by going to jointhemajorityreport.com. It is your membership that makes the free show possible. And even if you're just like a Friday listener, because I know we have some of those, you're talking about price of, a, of, a, of an iced coffee, which is, you know, at least, uh, you know, even at the bodega here, it's like uh, 275 Less than one iced coffee a week to support this program Keep it chugging along, and then you get a chance. If you want to dip into the fun half on other days, you can do that. Join the majority report.com. We're going to take a quick break. Back with Cliff Schechter. Back 
we're back at east front like and go out mechanicsburg anchorage and dar es salaam we'll all the new york with champagne and disco tapes from l.a slash san francisco but actually oakland and out of the meter he goes in berkeley with a communist reader mine was in tune with a boombox and walkman i was a horrible girl that was back then Love's a love, the wisdom teeth I love, what you on about I feel it in my bones, I feel it in my bones I'm stronger now, I'm ready for the house It's such a modest mouth, I can't do it alone I can't do it alone Every time I see you in the world You always step to my girl we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report. Ladies and gentlemen, even with the president out of the country in Germany, genuflecting to uh, Vladimir Putin, even then, we can remain calm and casual only because we have this little touchstone, this little ditty to bring us back to calm and casual. I uh, lost it. Okay, go. <laughs> Cliff Shack Dock, Libertas LLC. New media, public relations, and strategy. You want any of these services, you know who you gotta see. Cliff Shack Dock, Libertas LLC. Yes, uh, Cliff Schechter, Libertas LLC. Uh, Cliff, it's been, um, well, uh, wait, were we here last week? I can't even remember now. Uh, that was when I was in the, in the office. But oh, yes, yes of like, course. In the studio, I mean, but it does seem like lots has happened. It well, does. maybe not. I don't know. I've lost track of everything. Maybe it was because it was uh, July 4th. And, um, uh, of course, uh Donald Trump, um, uh, d during, oh, I guess Donald Trump was out of the news for probably as long as he's been in seven months just because of Chris Christie. I forgot, like, that even happened. Um, that was, oh, that was beautiful. All right, but the, the big story, of course, is that uh, Republicans went back to their districts. Most of them did not have town hall meetings. Most of them avoided... Uh, interaction with their constituents to the extent that they could because of this health care bill. Um, and now we're coming back to this narrative of it looks like Mitch McConnell is in retreat. And I want your take on this because I am highly skeptical. But uh, let's hear uh, what your perspective is. Um, I don't I mean, Mitch McConnell's in retreat. I never believe any of that stuff. First of all, everything that, that's reported there, <clears throat> there, there's some honest accounts. A lot of it's just people leaking to get their perspective across. So I'm always skeptical. I do. I am of the camp that it's going to be. It's it's a tougher bill to pass than I think you think it is. I think you kind of think it's a done deal. Um, I don't think that. I, I still think it could go either way. And I do think with some of these guys coming home, they just basically there was they just. Low, here just locked Rob Portman out of his office, basically did a sit down in his office and they couldn't get people out. I do think the calls, I do think them showing up. Um, in, they tried to actually, you know, hire override um, Kasich's veto to freeze our Medicaid, which I, I assume they did that to make it easier for Rob Portman to vote against it. Right. Cause then he's not saving, he's not getting rid of anything. They don't, they don't have it, uh, but they couldn't override it. Um, so the Republicans, you know, the state house, for example, here could not get the votes they needed to get to do what they need to do. So I, I'm just, I, I'm, it's not to say that, that this is still in a lot of danger. I think it is. And people don't need to be calling a lot, but I do believe that, that you've got someone like a Dean Heller sitting there looking at things and saying, there's no, I mean, there's no chance I win in 2018 already in deep, whatever, if I vote for this and you get your sort of, some of your folks, uh, like, Ted Cruz, who I almost think doesn't want to vote for it from the right. So, you know, we talked about it last week and then can pretend, he, you know, then he can say, I didn't take away people's health care. Right. You know, um, I, I, you know, and he's up in 18 and he's got a, a serious race. 
in a state trending away from him. And frankly, he has to win among humans, of which he doesn't come off as one, which makes it more challenging, too. Um, so I, I don't think it's a done deal. I certainly think moderates have proven again and again to be some of the wimpiest characters, Republican moderates in, in the world. But I do think that there's a good half dozen to a dozen. The ones who are just doing it uh, who because they care, uh, you know, or sort of care. I'm not sure what the right thing is. But, and they didn't want to really hurt their constituents, but aren't in political peril, really, if they do. I don't trust those votes at all. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like a, like a Capito and Cassidy and people like that who are in very conservative states. I think they'll all come around. But I do question if, uh, you know, Susan Collins going to run for governor of Maine in 18, with Heller needing to win re-election, Flake needing to win re-election, Cruz needing to win re-election. Gardner up in 20 in a, in a Democratic presidential year in a state trending away from him or not, but in a presidential year. You know, I mean, I don't know. They well, don't Cruz, folks to get. Cruz has started floating this idea. Um, well, here's 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 why I'm sc- uh, still um, thinking they're going to pass this. Now, I I, I uh, done deal may be overstating it a little bit, but I still think it's like a 70 30. And, you know, there was there was a story out yesterday in The Washington Post uh, that McConnell uh, was at a um, a Rotary Club lunch in Glasgow, Kentucky, and said that um, if my side is unable to agree on an adequate replacement, then some kind of action with regard to the private health insurance must occur. No action is not, uh, not an alternative. We've got insurance markets imploding all over the country, including this state. Uh, he said they're going to have to work with Democrats. Now, he said this before. When he says this, it does not. I mean, it seems to me that if he thought this was not going to happen, uh, he would not be saying, I'm going to work with Democrats. Right. Because he's going to have to. <laughs> If he thought it wasn't going right. to happen and it would put him in a weak position. I think he's saying this because he's ba- this is basically a threat to those yes, uh, people who are not going to vote. You're going to have to go back to your lunatic uh, Republican voters who are just like my lunatic Republican voters. And you're going to have to say that you're going to have to work with Democrats on saving Obamacare. I mean, that to me is like most of these people saying I'm going to now perform an abortion. I mean, honestly, like, <laughs> I don't think there's anything more allergic that they could be allergic, their voters could be allergic to. Now, Ted Cruz is floating this idea, if we don't uh, pass a bill, we're going to vote for just repeal, which is probably what he would do, right? And the repeal would be punted. And that's sort of the scenario that I thought initially they would do. We're going to repeal Obamacare, we're going to then uh, replace it two years from now, past the 2018 uh, election. Right. That was their original plan until Donald Trump came out and said, we're going to pass it and we could put in a new one, a, re- a replace, like maybe that, right at that time, maybe a day later, a week later. Uh, and that, that screwed everything up for, for everybody, it seems to me. But, I mean, I saw, like, for instance, and, and let me tell you another reason why I'm skeptical. And I just found this sort of weird. Uh, I saw a headline on CNN, Senator John Hoven from North Dakota, mm-hmm. Matt's favorite senator in the country. Um, really? Well, it's his senator. Uh, Matt, I spend the most time on his social cool media name. pages. Yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt spends a lot yeah. of time on his Facebook page. Um, Saying hello. CNN yeah. said, you know, uh, touted it as if Hoven is against the bill. And it really, what it, it, well, what it really turns out is Hoven, um, he said, uh, Hoven himself said, and this is when you go uh, to the, uh, what is this paper? The, uh, the Bismarck Tribune? Yeah, the Bismarck Tribune. If you go d- directly to the Bismarck Tribune, uh, what Hoven says is this. Hoven himself said, quote, he doesn't support the bill as it stands. Right? Now... Of course he doesn't They could stand that. differently. They could change like one little thing. Of course. Yeah. Of course. This is just No, like- see, I don't trust any of the reporting. That's I, I'm coming to my conclusions based on trying to do my own analysis of, of where these guys' political vulnerabilities are. And just and, and of course taking them all 
not anything close to their word, assuming that the most cynical characters in the world, which most of them, most of them are, and it will come down to a pure vote of how what benefits me more politically or what hurts me less probably is the better question. And someone like Hoven, absolutely not. And that's why I think in the end, Cassidy, he can win, you know, I mean, maybe Mitch Landrew, who's been getting a lot of headlines as mayor of Louisiana, but I even think with a name, the name Landrew, it's very tough for a Democrat to win Louisiana these days. So mm-hmm. I think some of these, some of those states, I fully expect them to jump on board, no matter how much it hurts their constituents, because I don't think in the end that's their biggest concern. But in the ones where it really could cause these guys to lose, the ones who, who seem to want to stick around in politics, you know, I mean, in the end, that may that may be the, the factor that keeps them from doing it. Yeah, I don't but know. I mean, I, again, that's an analysis of mine. I'm not taking any of the news media saying at face value. And I'm still assuming that we're, we're in a 50-50. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I if I'm one of those senators and I'm I'm the one I'm the one of two or three who prevented Obamacare from being repealed, I gotta think like automatic primary loss for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that yeah, just that's potentially true. And so I, I don't know. I mean well, I they guess, have to weigh all that stuff because you're right, because for some of them, for like a Ted Cruz, the example might be, as bad as it may be, as tough a race as he might have with Beto O'Rourke. Uh, in Texas, he may get a primary from the right, which is hilarious. Yes. Being that it's hard to get much further to the right than Ted Cruz. Um, but yeah, so th- that may be, that consideration may come in. But for others, if you're in, let's say, Maine or, you know, you're in Nevada or Colorado, you need to figure out <clears throat> where the bigger threat comes from. Does it come in the primary or does it come in the general? And I guess it's really going to be whatever conclusion they come to on that stuff. Um, and so that's why I'm saying I can still see them jumping off because they don't, they, they're scared they're going to lose. But I, as you said, I can also see them getting McConnell's assurances. They'll have all the business money they want, getting the Koch brother assurances and all that stuff and saying, well, I'm just going to have to battle my way through a general election and somehow keep people aboard by spending gobs of money and outspending my opponent. Uh, I'm going to need to pull all this off, you know? And, now, you and know, of course, I'll have the Russians on my side. Let's, so there's that, too. Let's turn to the uh, to the Democrats for a moment, uh, because there there's been an interesting sort of rash this week. Of I mean, I remember um, I'm trying to think what the topic was, but I remember Mark Green, uh, who was one of the um, uh, one of the people who uh, was a uh, um, I don't know what his job was at Air America. He was the president at one point. He was sort of the fake Did owner, you know what it fake was? owner. No, he, he, well, he thought it was to sit in a corner office and, uh, uh, but, I'm so bad. I love getting but you but he, 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 he was a Clinton surrogate in 2008. And, um, at one point he approached me and said, Hey, do you want to write an op-ed about something that was favorable to Clinton? I can't, for the life of me, I cannot remember what it was. And I was like, no, uh, because I didn't uh, buy into the op-ed and I never wanted to do anything for this guy. And the interesting thing was, like, two days later, that exact op-ed shows up, I don't know if it was in the Washington Post or where, by Lanny Davis. And that that's who they went to. That was the only person they could find to do it. <laughs> you and can't so, get anybody to do it. You know what, you that, do it. what I g- gathered from that is that their uh, word gets spread out in some fashion. We want this narrative this week to show up in the media. And it seems yeah. to me that this week there was a narrative that showed up in the media. Uh, we saw. And the right's much better at this, too, than we are. Oh, much so, better. I mean, it's so important. naked. But, it, but, but the narrative that I saw was Mark Penn coming out and writing a oh, piece about going back to the center. Uh, there was a piece by John. Have I told any of you recently what, what a piece of shit that guy was to work for? <laughs> no, but I'm willing to hear <laughs> it again. Um, but John. Har- Someday we may, we may have to go into that again. My first political, may, big political job at Penn and Schoen back in 96. But go ahead. Well, uh, um, John Harwood wrote a piece about the uh, voter study group. Um, and with, uh, I think Axelrod, uh, had a quote in there. I mean, these are stories that are pushed. I mean, this is what comms people do. They push stories 
And so you see all these yep. things showing up this week. It was interesting um, because, uh, and then there was like some, I, I, I guess you could call it pushback from Matt Iglesias, if you will, uh, saying that, you know, Bernie Sanders is clearly the favorite in 2020. But there is just a sense out there, it seems to me. Uh, and then you also had this week where you had the uh, For the Win people, some tech uh, billionaires who can't figure out how to influence politics other than with billboards <laughs> uh, in D.C. that are crowdsourced. All of this shows up in one week, and it suggests to me that there was some moneyed interest somewhere that said, hey, we got a problem. We're sort of losing in uh, at least the expectations. We're losing somewhere. I want this narrative to get out there. Uh, what, what's your right. perspective? Uh, I mean, it, it uh, it's pretty much the same as yours. Look, all these guys are also tied to, to, to I mean, you bring up Mark Penn. I, I mean, the DLC went goodbye, but I'm sure, I, I don't, he must be tied to third way, I'm sure, still. He used to be. Uh, one of these places, it takes in big money from people that push, you know, the whole centrist decentrist idea. Uh, so I have no doubt that, that, you know, these guys were, that they, they got their marching orders. Harwood is someone who seems pretty intellectually honest to me. Well, so I don't put him he's in that a reporter category. who got pushed the story. That's what it seems to, right. to me. Right. And, and did, a, I think, a, you know, he does a generally good objective job, but yeah, I think, I think that, that there's no doubt that some of that narrative, uh, they decided we need to, to disseminate via various, media and by by people who will get everyone to talk. I mean, again, you know, your analysis, I guess, is what I'm saying is exactly right, because you see this a lot and you know that it's not just by accident. And if you've been in those rooms before, seen the way that stuff works, of course, of course, they're doing it. The question is, you know, are they what, what do you think they're laying the ground for? I, 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 I mean, I'm not sure. I guess that's my 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 question to you. I mean, it's I think it, clearly there is concern uh, that, you know, some of these sort of it, it's right now is where I think you start to get you start to see the sort of the building of people's campaigns for 2020. Right. I mean, you, you have people who are visiting different states around the country. Uh, you're hearing names, uh, you know, uh, bandied around. Everybody's putting up uh, trial balloons. You just keep seeing all these yeah. quotes about Kamala Harris here. Or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. then, then you have like Cory Booker's, uh, you know, the story of Cory Booker's fake um, uh, drug dealer friend, uh, you know, uh, crops back up. I mean, it's all bubbling up now. And it's um, it's interesting to watch what Bernie is doing because Bernie this week Basically, I mean, I don't want to say he tacked to the right, but uh, earlier this yeah, week... Yeah, he moved a little bit to the center on some stuff, too. I was a bit surprised by that. He basically just said, there's interim steps to where I want to get. Uh, right. And He basically stayed on the left in single payer, um, which I think is a pretty is getting to be a pretty consensus Democratic Party position at this point. Um, but on some of the other things he talked about during the campaign, like a fracking ban and some other things, he moved a little bit more towards a gradual uh, position as opposed to right away. If I'm, you know, if I'm, I, don't, I think that was one of the issues, and there are a few others. Um, you know, well, I think some of it is just that, Sam, is, is, is people are positioning themselves, right? Um, but I, I think, you know, it's hard to think, and maybe we need to do more of what's coming up and what they may be trying to sort of preempt in certain ways. Because I, I have a hard time believing that the, the sort of the Mark Penn op-eds and stuff are about trying to convince Democrats to back off on on Obamacare. That's one thing every Democrat's united on. Right. And standing up to Trump is very good, no matter if you're progressive, centrist, or whatever the hell you are. So I, I have a, that one, uh, you know, so that's, that's a little harder to read. But the question is, you know, do we have economic votes coming up? around uh some of the the they've already taken i guess one i don't know where we are at this point on some of the pushback or rollback of dodd frank you know i mean what else do we have coming where where the whole you need to move to the center thing might be a preemptive strike to, to get them to do that that's the question it's very strange you know i saw tammy baldwin on uh on hayes's program i think it was last night and he was asking her essentially to criticize ron johnson she would not. 
It was very odd. Hmm. I mean, she, and meanwhile, she just, uh, you know, like yesterday came out for a single payer, but she kept saying, I want to work together. I mean, it's, it's hard to figure out what the, what is going on here. Cause she's saying like, you know, I want to work together with a bipartisan policy oriented response to healthcare. That to me sounds as much like a threat uh, on some level as Mitch McConnell's does, which is like, you know, yeah. I mean, is there a greater failure by Republicans than having to work with Democrats? Uh, you know, they no, didn't have to. They, did, they refused to it, do it when they were in the the, the minority. Uh, and they years. spent all this time basically saying the Democrats are akin to Satan. So it's, it's it's sort of like when they make promises for certain legislation forever, and then can't live up to it. Of course, they just they end up hurting themselves and end up having you know finally people. At least some people see past the facade. It's the same thing here. I mean, you can't tell people that the, that the, the other side's evil for them and be like, "All right, well now we want to work with them." It's, I mean, it, they're evil, right? Sort of in a that. box, uh, a little bit. And I think, look, the bottom line is also Republican voters. Just when you poll them, they don't want compromise, um, and that's the sort of um, you know the. The, the the box I guess that they're in, but all right, let's let's turn. I mean, we're going to have a better sense when they when everybody returns back to D.C. and you start That's to right. get like um, a, a a clearer sense of where everyone is on this thing because I think this vote is going to be so um, defining in terms of what's going to happen between now and 2018, right? Because nothing get e- nothing gets easier from here, it seems to me. Uh, for the the Republicans, but um, uh, no, I, I mean I'm not sure where it does. They're, they're dealing with a where you know the, increasingly, as you were saying about the lack of compromise, their base is is alienated and off away from really almost you know not maybe it's not three quarters, two thirds of the electorate, and not willing to to move forward on anything. Any compromise is considered to be be you know treason. So I'm not really sure what they can get done because the same dynamic that plays out around the you know, debt ceiling votes that has played out with the Obamacare bill in the end that's made this so difficult. You can have you know moderates who, or people who are even mainstream conservatives who don't want to lose, who aren't going to want to do what the nuts are going to do, and the nuts are going to refuse to even compromise in the slightest. So I don't see where this moves forward. Yeah, I mean, I and, I, and I don't know where you get your, your tax cuts and your increase in military spending Either. I mean, it, you know, it's not like that's going to be any easier to uh, to to wrangle if if they can't get a, a, a win here. Right. Like well, these things have that sort of like quality of of, uh, you know, I think what Sam Stein called the jailbreak. You know, once they once <clears throat> once they see some of their fellow senators and, and, and House people bucking uh the the leadership it becomes easier for all of them to do it and uh more yeah. more of an incentive frankly to do it so i don't know i guess we'll see on that the um uh, the other big story this week which garnered virtually no attention was that um the ethics uh, uh the the uh office of <laughs> director uh, the ethics office director walter schaub resigned here, let's listen to this. This is um, uh, him explaining why on CBS News. For president, his attorney also said he couldn't sell off his assets because he'd lose money. I have no sympathy for that. I mean, he's in a position where he's going to have to send young men and women to die in combat, potentially, or risk their lives at least. They're paying a much higher price. So, no, it's not too much to ask for somebody to incur a bit of a financial loss if they have to sell things off. Shab. So wait, that's uh, Shab uh, just explaining why he um, uh, needs to divest from things. Yeah, why why Trump needed to divest, and of course uh, he has resigned now, uh, with uh, basically saying like, yeah, the current situation. This is what he said on NPR. The current situation has made it clear that the ethics program needs to be stronger than it is. And he talking about moving on to the campaign legal center. I'll have more freedom to push for reform. I'll also be broadening my focus to include ethics issues at all levels of government. So the current situation, he's referring yeah. to the, the, uh, the Trump administration. The joke, 
I mean, yeah, he's referring to the ridiculous situation where there are ethical concerns are not even like a a third or fifth or fiftieth concern. They don't actually exist in this administration. So I read something else also where he was saying, you know, I wouldn't sit around and, and uh, you know allow any business to do this. So how could you know how could I allow them to, or something like that. Uh, I mean, it's, it, the, the, we've seen this from the beginning. There's no, it's not whether there are ethical concerns or not. They've completely ignored that part of what every other president, at least in recent history, has done. I mean, he refused to release his tax returns. He refused to divest from parts of his company. He turned it over to, to Beavis and Butthead there, who end up being involved in policy anyhow. Kushner's done the same thing. Kushner's out there selling Chinese visas. I mean, for you know, uh, I mean, there's there's no there's, it doesn't exist. So for someone like him, what was the point in staying? You only sully your reputation. And here is uh, the the other I think sort of problem with this: we're done with the ethical standards that we had prior to this, which may or may not have been you know so great, but we're done even paying lip service to this. This is right. basically, this becomes the precedent. No one's going to be replaced in this office. Uh, this is going to be the precedent. Whoever is going to be president in 2020, um, regardless of who it is, is not going to um, impose more restrictions on them. Just politicians don't do that. And so we have, it's another sort of baseline that has just dropped uh, yeah, that this norm we will is now never, gone. We'll, we will never recover from this. And it is, um, I mean, because look, I mean, people can go check their, their news feeds right now. I, you can barely find this. It happened a day, uh, you know, uh, a day or two ago. And there's nothing, nothing uh, in the news about no. it anymore. It's gone. It's going to be completely acceptable to profit from your time in office. And this this is just another standard that uh, we won't recover from. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, it's not just that. It's not just the profiting from your office. It's the massive conflicts of interest that are that end up, you know, when you're trading U.S. security, as certain people seem to have for whatever it might be that you're, you where you can benefit financially. I don't know. I mean, again. I could see us having a revival of sorts if the right person came into office and and reinstituting all these norms. Uh, so I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's it's not likely, and it would be very difficult, and it'll probably be a while before it happens. And I mean, it's just a, it's such a it's a failure on such a basic level. And in the end, as you said, we can't even report it because there's too much other stuff. I mean, Trump just got out of his two and a half hour love fest with Putin. You know, I mean, there's so much other stuff going on out there that this ends up being overlooked. All right. Well, let's talk about one more story, too, because this one, uh, uh, you know, you had flagged that. And I know how much uh, you spend so much of your time shopping at Hobby Lobby uh, for your craft I do. Gear. It's such a nice store. So everybody. Remember- I also find that Jesus watches over me when I shop there. I appreciate that. Hobby like Lobby was the company that. Um, went to, um, uh, was the the plaintiff in the uh, Supreme Court case, which was about uh, the Affordable Care Act, um, uh, saying that employers had to offer insurance that had birth control. And because this is a so-called closely held company. um, Right. This. A made up uh, term. Right. uh, This company, uh, because its owners are serious, serious, I guess, fundamental Christians, uh, they have a problem with birth control, and they didn't want health insurance that they offered, even though it didn't affect their price at all, that they had to pay for it, they didn't want that health insurance to offer uh, birth control. And so uh, the uh, Supreme Court made an exception, uh, in that case, Burwell versus Hobby Lobby. Now, apparently... The Greens, this is the member of the, the Green family, uh, they're evangelical Christians. They also sit on the board of the Museum of the Bible, which is opening in Washington, D.C. This, um, this fall. And apparently, you know, if you're going to open up a museum about the Bible, 
you want to get some of that stuff from uh, Adam He's and Eve. He's biblical stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. And it turns out that the way that you do that is you pay smugglers uh, money for stuff that they have it. stolen and, and smuggled out of Iraq. Now, who might that be? Who might be one of the biggest sellers of artifacts coming out of Iraq at this time? I'm just trying to use common sense here. It'd almost be like a, a mobster type group that has complete control. People are scared of. They, they run certain territories. I feel like it could be ISIS. For yeah. Example. Uh, a lot of people speculate that, uh, well, not speculate. A lot of people know so, that ISIS made a lot of its money uh, selling oil and artifacts from uh, what is considered the cradle of civilization, right? Uh, so, yeah, so these Christian right, the usual complete hypocrites, uh, cannot pay for birth control, but they can, uh, they can steal artifacts and, uh, and use that to make sure ISIS stays in business. And here's uh, and and here's quite the, a group we have there. And they've had to pay a uh, three million dollar fine, and and obviously uh, give up the uh, um, uh, ownership of this stuff. But here's the part apparently of the story that makes it um, makes it very hard for them to say we had no idea what we were buying, uh, because Hobby Lobby wired one point six million dollars to seven seven different bank accounts associated with five different people to pay for the items. They were shipped to the United States in multiple packages, falsely labeled tiles sample. They were also, they were also sent to multiple locations. Now, I don't know in the craft business if this is what you do when you order stuff. We're just going to spread it out all around the country so that we're not, uh, we don't have to pick it up in one location. Right. Multiple accounts, fake labeling of it. Yeah, it sounds very above board. It sounds like they totally had no idea. It was just an honest transaction gone wrong. Thirty-four um, hundred, over 3,400 objects. Right, and they get, what, $3 million fine? They should go to prison um, for, for that kind of mass theft. Also, maybe, you know, helping the enemy. You know what I love but, about uh, this? I, I lo- this is what because it's Hobby Lobby, the company did this, right? So yep. it's a closely held company when you don't want to provide birth control to your uh, employees. But when it comes time to committing a criminal act, it was the company did it, not us. <laughs> Uh, there's there's no there's no justice and truth out there anymore, Sam. <laughs> it's incredible. Well, I'm ready to give up. Well, no, I mean, uh, I'm not surprised. Or any of us ever, when it's proven that the, the 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 avatars of the Christian right are always end up in, ending up in relationships outside of their marriages and stealing things, and you know, they all the whole belief system is authoritarian which is you are privileged and can do what you want because you've found God and you can find a way to justify all of it. But everybody, it's everybody else who has to, who the rules are for. It's all the rest of us. I uh, was just, uh, they just uh, did that episode on Handmaid's Tale last night. So, uh, that I watched. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I, I think from now on we, we can, can we legitimately say from now on that, uh, that Hobby Lobby supports Sharia law? Well, uh, at least materially. <laughs> I'd like to say that in Oklahoma just to freak people out. Yeah, indeed. See how they respond. Well, I'm sure there'll be a lot of protests. Uh, Dave Rubin will be down there uh, broadcasting in front of a Hobby Lobby soon. <laughs> Good uh, luck on the uh, Bible Museum. Good job, guys. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, Cliff, uh, I hope uh, your spirit. You should go down there and do your act, Sam. I should go down I mean, there. I heard your, we should I, go I, down there. Should, I mean, we should go down there dressed I mean, as I ISIS operatives to congratulate them and do a ribbon cutting with yeah, them. That's exactly. what we really should do. We should I mean, turn them like that, turbans uh, and fake beards and be like, we'd just like to say that this was a lot of work that went into this, and uh, it's always good when a project comes to fruition. <laughs> you know what that might do too, Sam? It might help you rebound from your status as a failed comedian. Oh, well, nice. Ooh. Ooh. Cliff Schechter. Nothing could do on. that. He's a goddamn shield. Hey. Real comedians speak truth to power, not lies for MSNBC. <laughs> Cliffy, 
Uh, we'll talk to you next yeah. week, buddy. All right. Take care. Thanks, All right, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Cliff Schechter, everyone. Bye. Cliff Schechter. Um, while we're on the uh, whole um, evangelical Christian thing, many years ago, um, I believe, and I think actually, you know, I should have talked to Cliff about this, because he's been down to this creationist museum. I think he even called into this show early on uh, from the Creationist Museum. And back when they were just planning this thing in the aughts, um, I called and got into it with somebody from the uh, Creationist Museum. I think I have that phone call somewhere, and maybe longtime listeners of the original Majority Report remember that. Well, it turns out that Ken Ham, the uh, creationist, who uh, built the Ark Encounter Project, which is um, the uh, sort of the sister program, if you will, or the brother, I guess, program to the Creationist Museum, um, is blaming now intolerant atheists for the failure of the Ark Encounter Project from providing for the, there's pictures of it, of providing for the economic tax base revenue driving and economic activity that uh, they said it was. Uh, Ken Ham said, uh, it's the intolerant atheists are mocking the return on the investment uh, taxpayers have received. Quote, sadly, they are influencing business investors and others in such a negative way that they may prevent Grant County, Kentucky, from achieving the economic recovery that its officials and residents have been seeking, said Ken Ham. He, of course, is the uh, president of Answers in Genesis. Uh, why so many lies and misinformation? Simply because we are in a spiritual battle, and intolerant secularists are so upset with such world-class attraction like the Ark and Creation Museum that publicly proclaim a Christian message. They will resort to whatever tactics they deem necessary to try and malign the attractions. Uh, Grant County Judge Executive Steve Wood told the local station WKYT, I think the Ark's done well. Then he laughed, and I'm glad for them on that, but it's not done us good at all. If you believe in your theory so much, then why do you have to be so fucking arrogant? <laughs> Uh, apparently the, um, the millions of dollars of, uh, local business has not millions uh, of dollars. <laughs> yes. Well, because they got a they huge, literally predicted millions of, dollars. of local business drop because oh, there was like all the sorts of, of creationism. Well, there it. was, there was a ton of taxpayer subsidies for this thing. Uh, it got $18 million in state tax incentives. To offset the cost of the park's construction, he got a 75% property tax break over 30 years from the city of Williamstown. This is a town of 3,000 uh, near where the, law, uh, the, uh, the park was located. And an $11 million road upgrade that would almost exclusively facilitate traffic going to and from the park. And then there was like a $200,000 gift from the Grant County Industrial Development Authority. 100 acres of reduced price land and a $62 million municipal bond issue that um, from Williamstown that Tam says uh, kept the, the project from, you ready for this? Sinking. Uh -huh. I'm not going to mock his intelligence anymore at all. So there you have it. a savvy guy. If we convert that into a yacht, uh, I might let you slap, your, slap my name on it. How awesome would that be? A yacht. Trump's Ark. Trump's Ark. All right, we're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. And what's that? Oh, do we have a Jimmy uh, Reefer Cake song? Uh, yes, it's called Governor Cocksucker. Hmm. Okay. Um, I hope there's a twist to this. All right, let's hear it, and then I'll go get Andy Kimmer. This is a good team. This is Governor Paul Richard LePage. I would like to talk to you about your comments about my being a racist cocksucker and you, I want to talk to you You want, I want you to prove that I'm a racist I have spent my life helping black people and you little son of a bitch socialist cocksucker you, I need you to 
this freaking, I want you to record this and make it public because I am after you. Thank you. That's Paula Page. Unedited. Message as he intended it. We shoved rake choice voting legal weed and minimum wage down your throat, Polly. So hard you've been having erotic nightmares. And the people of Maine voted to tax the rich to pay for our schools. Because we thought it was fair. You think you're politically incorrect? Well, you're messing with the wrong guy. You're gonna wake up crying cause you're dreaming you got jizz in your eye. Even though you overturned the fact that we voted to tax the rich on those other three issues, the people of Maine made you look like a bitch. You played your game of chicken government shutdown, threatening special needs kids. You just look like a clown. Oh, Governor Cocksucker, Governor Cocksucker, you got it shoved down your throat, and I ain't feeling sorry for ya, Governor Cocksucker, Governor Cocksucker. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess when you uh, roll around in the mud. You get dirty, right? Is that the way it goes? Let's see. But I, I, I appreciate the, the, the effort and there you go. Oh, all right. Oh boy. Okay. All right. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, Andy Kindler. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) 
Ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> God. Folks, it's a casual Friday, but is there anything really less casual than getting to being to having so much anticipation and so much excitement and so much um just anticipatory excitement <laughs> when you think about the idea of listening to this theme song and then knowing what comes next. With a Jew like Candy Kindler, you know you can't go wrong. His ancestors wrote the God Bless America song. A true Obama bot, and he believes Obama can Obama never be can wrong. Never do wrong. Yeah. And he can laugh. Can laugh. Dot com. com. You made me laugh so hard. I had to write you your own theme song, Andy Kindler. Andy Kindler. Andy Kindler. Hello, oh, Andy. Makes me cry. Makes me cry every time. Ah, oh, I'm so glad you're here. It is. You sound uh, like Howard Cosell today. I just realized. I do. And, and who better than Andy Kindler to bring the show home? And <laughs> hey, I'm doing a Howard Cosell. Call Frank Caliendo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's apropos because um, we've gotten in such a habit talking about Dennis Miller that um, citing a, um, uh, you know, uh, Howard Cosell is really very Dennis Millerin in a way. Um, too recent, too recent. I was going to say him. the only the only downside is we don't know the names of famous uh, sportscasters from the 1930s. That's the uh, uh, that's Bruno what, Sommer. Bruno San Martino is, or something like that. <laughs> well, he was a wrestler, wasn't he? I know. I was just trying. I'm trying. You know, I'm not good at this. Andy, <laughs> what? Well, before we move, before we get on to Dennis Miller, what, what, have you, yeah. what have you been doing? What's the latest Twitter fight that you've been getting into? Are things well, between you and Ricky Gervais, have they calmed down? Or Will you stop calling him Gervais? <laughs> What's his name? It can't be Gervais. It's Gervais. Isn't it Gervais, everybody? It's Gervais. I love that you won't call him by his name. His yeah, name it, is Gervais. It's Gervais. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think you'll find I don't know it's either. Gervais. I think you'll find that it's Gervais. No, he's, uh, it is really almost, I don't know what you call it. It's like he, he first of all, he's like a, a, a bully from the old school, you know? Because mm. my, my troll wants me to mention his name, but I won't. That kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he tr- he tweets I tweet about him and then he tweets he retweets things he said about me earlier that day without mentioning me. I don't even understand. What is it, how does he win by not mentioning me? What what, what happened? He he does nothing but talk about me but he men- but he doesn't say my name. What is that? It's like am I god? Yeah. <laughs> Well, nobody's to take your name in vain, and uh, my understanding is that uh, there's a lot of like, um, yeah. there's a lot of Twitter apps that if you um, you use um, if you use uh, those Twitter apps, it, you, it will cut out your name. Where did Michael go? Did Michael feel sick? <laughs> Michael literally just. I think- all right, he just said, uh, "Tell Andy I say hi," and I miss him. Like I just uh, looked up, and Michael was. He told me he's. Quitting. I don't think he feels well. Bye. He doesn't feel. He doesn't feel well. How do you know he doesn't? Wait, feel I owe him well? a call. Is it because I owe him a call? Probably. Maybe that's what it is. He's I probably think a little he bit doesn't hurt. Really feel well. He's probably hurt huh. a little bit uh, by you. It's physically. It, is it the buffet that you have? Is it the majority? Do you still have crudite we, in the morning? Because I love it. Well, the problem is we still have the exact same crudite. Uh, from the last time you saw it, <laughs> so it's it's a little bit on the um, it's a little long in the tooth, as it were. Which, of course, you don't say about vegetables. Now, Andy, <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a whole area we've never discovered. No. I wouldn't say that about vegetables. Well, wait a second. Now, with this whole uh, Ricky Gervais thing, uh, Gervais thing, yeah. The so he's he's he refuses to say your name. What does he think that you're doing this for publicity? Like, why do you like? I know why I get in fights like this. Why do you get in fights out of it? Like, do you get like some well, type of rush thing. or? I mean, you're a bit you know, of a okay. teetotaler, aren't aren't you? 
What does that mean? I'm a teetotaler. Well, I mean, it means like maybe this is, this is how you get your rush. Like, you don't. No, I smoke pot. Oh, okay. I smoke pot while I'm tweeting him. Oh, I... <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. No, okay. If you look at it one way, if you looked at it from the outside, you go, as, my, as many family members are doing, uh, tell Andy, tell him, what, you know, like my mother, hey, Andy, maybe you should back off on Hitler. Hey, Andy, maybe you should <laughs> stop talking about Ricky Dress. It looks from the outside, people think I'm a, uh, some people think I'm obsessed with it. From my point of view, yeah, I have problems on Twitter. You could see, see my problem. You could see my OCD from a mile away on Twitter, but you, uh, but you can't get out of the way. But, uh, hello. No, but the <laughs> thing is, is that he's a, hello. No, the thing is that he is constantly saying these things that have to be mocked. Like the other night, he goes, I think the crowd tonight in Manchester was even better than the, the crowd last night in Devonshire. I don't know. They're both amazing crowds. And he's, he's a maniac. He's a nutcase who brags. He goes, this joke I'm coming up with now is so offensive. Have you seen the presidential poll he does? He goes, who's the greatest president? Lincoln? Hitler? Or Pol Pot? <laughs> Did I offend you? <laughs> That's what he's like. Now, should I? Now, also, people think I tweet all the time. Sometimes I'll let 20, 30 minutes go in between <laughs> tweets. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't think people, I mean, the thing is that people assume that, uh, that you know, they, they project upon their own sort of like daily schedule onto you. And so it looks like you're obsessed. But I know that from, you know, back in the days where I was a comedian, where you would just, your whole day is basically just, you know, doing stuff like that. I mean, I... I have no job. Well, why isn't he busier than me? He's always claiming about how rich he is and his world tour. How does he have time, Ricky <laughs> Gervais, to look at every... He knows every single time I've referenced him. Because he started going after my, uh, my wife about a month ago, just out of the blue. And now I, I said, why, are you, why would someone go after my wife? And now he, he keeps going back. Oh, his poor, what if his poor wife's asleep? Wait, why, why, why is he, what is he saying about your wife? He goes, oh, his wife, he, goes, he stays up to 5 a.m. in the morning to tweet while his poor wife tries, that, that was the first one, while my poor wife tries to get sleep. Uh, so, I don't even know. So he, maybe he's, he's basically trying to drive a wedge between you and your has wife. Has he been talking? Has he been talking to her? <laughs> now, how long have you been married? He's insane. Andy? How long he's, have you been married? I've been married since. 2002. You do the math. Okay, so uh, 15, 15 some odd years. Has she figured this uh, out about you? That you're a little bit like this? Like a little critical of some people? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm medicated now. In fact, this year at Montreal, I will be apologizing for all of the jokes I said before I had Prozac. Look, when I said who, who died and made Jim Belushi a star, that's not me. <laughs> That's not me. Oh, did I tell That's you this story? That's not the best story? part of me. Wait a second. Did I? You know my Jim Belushi stories, right? I don't know. Do we? I was. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You were on his. You were on yes. his. Yes. You ta- did. You tank his sitcom on purpose. Well, I didn't tank it. I. I don't like to say I did that because then it makes people feel like I'm uh, afraid of my own success. <laughs> um, but I will say this: that I. Played up, I sort of did a little bit of Jackie Mason, which I felt would not uh, be consistent with the show uh, over the course of the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and. So you went, you wrote uh, Yiddish and you went even further Yiddish. Yes. You brought no British into I, it. I played, I, I, it was, they wrote British and I went full on playing Yiddish. And, uh, uh, I did bet uh, Benjamin Emile that I would get fired from the pilot, and that happened. <laughs> um, but I don't. I wouldn't say. Oh, when I, I think, when I think of the, what the show would have been like if you had <laughs> stayed, Sam. Yes, you were. But I do. There was one moment which I don't know if I ever really talked about on air, but there was one scene where we're all sitting around the family dinner table. And um, uh, Jim, of course, is at the head of the table, and Courtney Thorne Smith is uh, to his right. Uh, he, she was his <laughs> wife, and uh, I think her name was Kimberly Williams, was uh, the sister, and I was the brother. And, um, and, and you know, of course, I fit right in with uh, Kimberly Williams and Courtney Thorne Smith and that family, as you can you can tell. <laughs> and so 
Uh, during rehearsal, Jim starts like banging his fork as he's eating, like making his fork really loud as he's going down and getting the salad. Like bang, 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 bang. bang. And um, that was his, like, this is the bit I'm going to do during the thing. Bang, 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 bang. And then it came out like that John always used to do it. And I just was like, oh, oh. God. Do I really now have that to? That actually makes me cry. <laughs> It's like, does it? It's like that's the saddest thing I've ever you're, heard. You're stealing what is the, what is your the brothers. I know. You're 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 stealing from a genius so that you can uh, somehow get a half a laugh on a crappy ABC sitcom. Like, oh, I now that. refresh my memory on the uh, on the famous John Belushi fork. It was thing. I it was even... just no. I mean, it was just something apparently he did at home that uh, uh, that John used to do when they were you know oh, well, kids growing up. <laughs> Uh, Wait, why are you allowed to steal from that? Like, source material. But it's another comedian, and you're stealing from... But it's your brother. Well, I think the fact is that Jim is sitting in in that seat. Keep it in the script, I say. (laughs) Jim is sitting at that table because of his brother. Not, uh... It's not. It's not quite the same as. Yeah, I mean, I know, but, you know, if my sister has clothes that I like, I just take them. Right. Because that's the wow, difference that between is, uh, being a exactly, consumer and an artist. That's exactly the same, too. <laughs> uh, what a metaphor. Right. <laughs> but but the what best thing, so mean, this Andy. is actually more equivalent I'm to, like, today. this is more equivalent, this is more, uh, on, Kelly, this is more equivalent to, sweet, my sister died, so I get to wear her shirt. That's what it's more I like. I finally <laughs> get that. Finally, for all those many years, I wanted to wear that. That was a great episode. I wanted to wear that blouse, and finally she died, and I got to wear it. Yay! That's uh, sort I of would have loved that episode of According to Jim. All right. Now, um, uh, but Andy, what else have you been doing? It's not just Ricky Gervais, I assume. I have my own pod. I have a podcast now. Oh, yeah. How's that Josh. going? With my friend Josh Elvis Weinstein, it's called Thought Spiral, and everyone everyone involved with it is talking about it. <laughs> Both you guys. Yeah, and now we we have a chat. It's, there's no guests. It's just a chat where you get to see the inner workings of our brains and all of the. Ama- I mean, it's real. <sighs> How long was I out for? Uh. No, seriously. And which it's, way does I've it spiral? Nine episodes, Up or down? Sam. Nine. Nine. And and how's mm-hmm. the response been? Uh, we had over three downloads <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> but it's the same guy from different devices. Well, that's good. I mean, multi device, uh, multi platforming. You're multi platforming, in other words. <laughs> multi platform. I have three unique uh, visitors, U- unique visitors to the show a guy who wears a top hat and a lady who collects potato chips shaped like bunnies. <laughs> oh. Unique visitors. I pulled that joke out then. Now, where I do you record it? Do you go visitors. to a studio or, uh, or where do you go? You go to iTunes. You go to No, your no. Where do you record it? Where do you record it? Oh, at Josh Elvis Weinstein's house. Do you know Josh? No. He was, uh, he was on Mystery Science Theater 3000. He's a oh, hilarious man. Right. Okay. He's six blo- the reason why it happened, he's six blocks from me. That's how it all came together. You guys are just so close to each other. You're like, we have to do something. I have OCD that's out of control. I can't do anything. I haven't uh, uh, filled out a uh, laundry list in two years. But no, it's literally six blocks away. He has nice microphones. What's a laundry and it's list? it's fantastic. What is a laundry list? Oh, don't start with your laundry list <laughs> of problems. You know, like, here's the thing. I don't like I'm Russian breaking out bleach. all my laundry list uh, material. I don't like Russian OxyClean. I don't know where I'm going with this bit. Wait, It'd be why? like a laundry list You don't like at a meeting. All right, so what, so, so what else? Anything else? Are you working? I do like are you, are you doing any shows? I mean, Marin's been uh, off, so you haven't been doing any. Have you been acting at all? Where can we see you? I got... You know, you know what is a highlight for my career, Sam? And I'm not even joking about this. I got some fairly hefty Marin residuals. After really? when, I, when I say fairly hefty, I mean one of them was $200. Wow. And, uh, and it's off the air. I am starting to rake it in from my previous work. I got news for you. I still get uh, like $3 almost every quarter from Next Stop Wonderland, which was an independent film. 
What was that? Is that? That's not the one with the. Is that the one about the John Holmes? No, no. This was with Hope Davis, and uh, oh. it was a uh, you know a little Boston film. Were you the Jewish neighbor next door who never gets it right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, no. I was. Uh, I was, um, I think I was just like some type of like lawyer or something. But I mean, it was, uh, it, you know, John Benjamin was also in it. And um, uh, it was, you know, it was a little Boston movie. I refuse to do movies, apparently. <laughs> do you, st- are you refusing to do TV these days or what? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. I said, you know what? They haven't contacted me in a while. Uh, you know, do me a favor. Don't contact me. There you That's go. I say. Hey, I did something exciting. I did a spot, a, a part on Portlandia, which is like my favorite show. So that is actually a positive. Are they, it's, are they still doing Portlandia? Yeah. It's, they're wow. doing the last year, and I've loved that show since the first time I saw Carrie Brownstein and Fred Armisen in different wigs. I can't get enough of them. And I got to spend an hour with them, and I'm sure I annoyed everybody. Oh, just in an hour. All right. Well, speaking of, <laughs> I love that any joke where the premise is that I am so obnoxious <laughs> that no one would want to spend time with me because it's so true. I'm so Jewish in person. The, Damn, you don't come off that way on uh, on air. Oh, I come off very uh, British. <laughs> you come off as very sort of Protestanty. Andy, hey, how about that, Bill? Oh, yeah, tell me, talk to me. Well, what about Bill Maher? Bill Maher, huh? Wow, couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. What, his comeuppance. What happened to him? I don't he pay much the attention. the N-word. Oh, okay, yeah. He's the N-word. It's over for him. Is it? Wrap it up, Bill. Is it I over think, for him? Well, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, <laughs> I feel like you, you felt that way for a long time. All right, but let's, let's, speaking of someone it's over for, we have a lot of Dennis Miller stuff to get to. Uh, let's today. do it. Um... Here is With Michael. Michael, I don't know. He, I think he got sick. He quit. He quit. Apparently, uh, Kelly. What did you say to him, Kelly? What did you say to him? I can't talk about it. No, right. I think he's sick, or he, he must be sick. I guess. Well, you have a great nurse situation that, over at that, that show. That sounds to me like he got a job interview last minute, and uh, and so he had to. Uh, he'll do the old like I'm going to pretend like I'm going to be sick in the moment, and then go. Um, he said he's going to meet with Megan Mullally later uh, today. I don't know what that means. All right. Usually there's a ramp up. Here is, to the yeah, sickness. that's true. But this, <laughs> er, er, seriously. All right. So here is um, Dennis Miller, um, bereft because obviously, um, well, what's his face? Bill O'Reilly is gone. So he yes. um, he basically went on to the Fox News, uh, I think, inter office website and selected the next oldest guy at Fox that he could appear on television <laughs> with. And, and it turned out uh, to be um, uh, this guy. Uh, and let's, uh, let's play this clip. Police have recovered the body of an eighth victim from the River Thames. This person oh, no doubt jumped into the river to escape vehicular homicide. This, as Britain's Prime Minister Theresa May, takes this is a the hard segue. line on I love it. All right, hold on. Pause. Pause. Can pause for a second. So this is what uh, they're bringing him on. This is who yeah. This is what's this? this guy's name again? Uh, Stuart it, Barney. Yeah, Stuart, Stuart Barney. Barney. Maybe right. So you've got the London terror attacks, of course, happening right as he's talking. At, and <laughs> who are you going to bring on? Of course, it's going to be former comedian or current comedian Dennis Miller. Go ahead, play this. It's I just stop it. Comedian Dennis Miller is with us this morning. Dennis, it looks to me looks serious. Uh, like there's a mood change going on over there and here too. What say you? Well, let's say <laughs> being introduced. Pause it for comedians. one second. The what say you is the Bill O'Reilly <laughs> line, isn't it? Isn't that, oh, is that what he said? That was Bill what O'Reilly's say? classic thing. Like, I'm going to make an assertion. What say you to what I've just said? Is, is that their version of watch this space? <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. All right. So here it is. What say you, Dennis Miller? You look very serious for you? a comedian. Here we go. Well, listen, being introduced as a comedian in a segment like this is uh, antithetical. I'm just a citizen of the world looking, and I'm a bit of a pragmatist. And I would say to Theresa May, you think, you think on a Saturday night when young people are crossing one of the most known 
uh, you know, vistas in London, the, the London Bridge, and three kids pull up in a car and start stabbing one woman ten times. People jump into the river to get away. They go across, go into restaurants, start cutting people's throats. Do you think you have to step up now? For God's sakes, what? Churchill what must be saying? turning over in his grave like the rotating license plate on Bonds asked him, Martin, what are you kidding yeah. me? Wow, wow. Nice car, joke. Come on, May. pause you the- it. That's it. We've, we've reached peak uh. Dennis Miller. I'm not here as a comedian. I'm here as a student of the world. And it's I sh- antithetical. It's antithetical <laughs> to have Beyond now. Uh, it's antithetical. antithetical. But let me deliver the old spinning in his grave like the license plate on the Austin Martin on the Bond vehicle. Jeez. He goes for a horrible reference at the end of his diatribe. Where does he go from here? Did you listen to this whole thing, Andy? Uh, it just gets worse. It just gets worse and worse. <laughs> should, we let, should we listen to another 30 seconds? Let's or should we go? a couple more seconds. Let's listen to this. depressing. The home minister, 20, uh, the 20... Th- I, I think there was 20,000 cop jobs taken away. We've gotten to the point now where the one guy's out there on the bridge fighting them with a baton. This is absolute insanity. You have to right away go get the people on the watch list and do an FDR. Now, FDR went too far when he put 120,000 <laughs> Japanese Americans in an internment camp Sam. on the Upper Peninsula he of went uh, too far. You know, California. That's way too far. But take the 3,000 people on the watch list Put them in a camp and let them earn their way out with an explanation of what their life is, what's happening right here. I mean, that's just a simple fact, Stuart. You know, Dennis, pause you're it, right. Pause There's it for no... one second. Uh, I love it because when you, everybody knows when you uh, refer to do an FDR, what you're talking about is internment camps. <laughs> Hey, but don't let, don't lose the fact that he said he went too far, went too far. So do a half FDR, I guess. Quarter FDR it. <laughs> Do we need, should we listen to this anymore? It's, it is sort of just disturbing. Yeah, this is going to be better. All right, so that is yeah. uh, Dennis Miller, of course, brought on uh, to respond to the uh, London terror attacks because, well, I, I mean, I mean why? why wouldn't you? Why? How better? What, what? Why? I'll tell you why, Kelly, because people had to understand in what fashion Churchill was spinning in his grave, and of course, <laughs> it's like the license plate on the Austin Martin that uh, Bond would drive. So that's why. It's he just, was spinning in his Dennis grave like a, like a sundial sh- from the place he told <laughs> era. Dennis Miller's like a shut-in. It's like asking him to to comment on world events is just makes I'm so confused. Well, uh, his Kelly, facial hair does look good though. It's, right, Kelly? It's, it's funny that you that say... That's the worst. It's funny that he, she Sorry. says uh, Dennis Miller's a shut-in because we have video of him out on the road on the Dennis Miller, Bill O'Reilly live oh, show. Oh, well, for Bill O'Reilly, he'll do whatever. This is on Long Island in, on June 18th, right? Oh, is that what this good. is? Uh, and this is, the, um, this is the trailer sort of they use. It's like a Can high... You post, you post it. It's a highlight. Post it on the thing. Highlight, uh, highlight reel. Here it is. Mm. Uh, first, we're going to hear from some concert goers, and then we're going to see. And basically, if you can imagine, the stage is a circular stage, carpeted, then with a Persian rug in the middle, him there just with a stool, and, of course, a, um, a music uh, stand where he keeps his notes. Uh, <laughs> here, here, is, here is this clip. A grim scene, hasn't it? Everybody's hang, you know, angry as hell. Lying has turned into Wait, what's a grim going on? scene, hasn't it? Everybody's hang, you know, angry as hell. Kind of like you can just sense drunk? the tension. They've cut the seats back to like bobsled runs. You know, you're just <laughs> sitting there. Everybody's wired for sound. I'm to the point now where I don't even fly commercial. I just, uh, I got this industrial power stapler gun and I just put a twine handle on my what? forehead and go on UPS and uh, oh my god because it's grim man can we make it as hard to get into our country as it is to get off your plane <laughs> oh he's like a racist <laughs> I didn't even 
That was just the setup. And, uh, can we make it as hard to get into our country as it is to get off your plane when it arrives early at the gate? Yeah, he really wanted to get that uh, gem out there. So even though he got the laugh, the applause on uh, can we make it harder to get into our country, he had to go back and, uh, and redo that joke. That's the highlight reel? That's the highlight Oh, my God. <laughs> I've had more fun in my walk-in shower watching the water drain. <laughs> well, wait a second. Now, uh, uh, Dennis Miller seemed to... <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Miller had some very low energy there, but Bill O'Reilly came out with a purple coat and a uh, purple <laughs> sport coat, and he's bringing it big time. Here's his highlight clip from... Uh, and this is from, oh, is this on the, uh, oh, this is the same show, but he's talking about the 2016 primary because he hadn't quite updated his material. <laughs> okay, so the debate starts, right? And then Trump's a, a pretty big guy, and he's standing out there. So there's Jeb Bush, and he's the odds-on favorite. And Jeb Bush, well, Donald really has no experience. And he's, you know, Donald is, and this Trump looks at him and goes, you're boring. <laughs> What do you say to that? <laughs> no, I'm not. He is boring. Oh my! Oh my God! When I saw that. I, I wish I got like, reactions from nothing. <laughs> like this. And that was it. Jeb Bush was done. <laughs> Finished. Oh God. And then Marco Rubio. All right, who I thought was going to be the nominee. I thought we were going to be. And Marco Rubio's up there. What are you doing? And Trump looks at me because you're sweating. <laughs> Little Marco sweating. You should see him backstage. The towel's full of sweat. That was the debate. That was it. And Rubio says, you have little hands. This is... And Joe goes, yeah, well, I have something else. It's not so little. What? What is happening? What's oh happening God. to this country? Apparitions of Franklin and Jefferson and Washington. What is happening? We oh fought those God. people for this. I, I gotta say, like he, I'm having the exact same reaction just watching all those people laugh at him deliver that. Like, what is happening? What has happened to this country? It sounds like a different show that he that they've <laughs> they've piped into. <laughs> yes, he he's unbelievable. This guy is unbelievable, uh, O'Reilly. He's just the thing is, you know, you should you shouldn't learn too much about your heroes because he's saying this hilarious stuff. All I can think about is him groping a woman in the no spin zone. That's all I can think about. <laughs> yes. No, I know. All I can think but about I is he know. should be in jail or something. I mean, I. It's so hard to love him as the rebel that he was with all of these. You shouldn't. That's why it's like Picasso. It's like finding out about Picasso. You don't want to find out. Yeah. About I mean, his this, is, this life. is what happens when you fly too close to the sun, Andy. He's just doing Trump's material from Trump's 2016 tour. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's exactly right. He's doing Trump's material. <laughs> and then Trump said to Marco, You're ugly. Hey. And then Marco said, you, you have really tiny fingers. And then Trump said, You're a moron. Hey. And then Andrew Dice Clay said, hickory dickory dock. <laughs> I mean, what's the country turned into? But that's probably why. What does it mean? That's probably why Miller was so depressed sounding because he's been going on tour and O'Reilly's been cleaning up just by like basically <laughs> narrating 2016. Yeah, exactly. I can't follow. I can't follow Billy. <laughs> I'm going to bring right? out the good, the really great uh, airline stuff that killed it back in the 80s. Hey, Billy, I think you're, you know, don't get the crowd too uh, pumped up. I got to follow you. I wonder who follows who on that. I wonder if they switch off. No way. Dennis Miller opens, I bet. Do you think Dennis Miller opens? Probably, right? He's not the It draw. would be the only interesting part of that show to learn. That'd be the only interesting <laughs> fact to learn. <laughs> it's true. Once you learn that, it's over. 
Uh, Who opens for who? Exactly. At least Bill's top billing. Oh, my gosh. Should we do this um, from the... Oh, we got one more clip. This is apparently Bill O'Reilly has been doing... I don't know if he's still doing it, because this is a month old now. But he immediately started to do his podcast or had been doing it. I'm not exactly sure what the status of the podcast was until he got fired. But I think, you know, and I have a feeling like we're not going to see much more of it. But uh, here is Dennis Miller on the uh, Bill O'Reilly podcast talking about uh, college campuses. Your favorite topic, Andy. Here it is. Are you working solo? Are you zipping around the country? Are you doing any gigs? Oh, I go out once in a while, but I'm uh, I'm into denouement management now. You know my theory. This this country's in odd shape. I, Pause I it for one second. On. Apparently, Bill O'Reilly can't figure out how to work a phone system for his podcast. But uh, it's Dennis Miller on the other side, or Dennis Miller is calling from his bathtub. This country's in odd shape. I, I don't want to perform on a college campus anymore. Obviously that whole thing's gotten so crazy. Yes. Who, who needs that yeah. headache in their life? And uh, by the way, I was watching Zuckerberg and I think, uh, you know, I thought to myself, God, this guy's just Bernie Sanders with a worse haircut. And, uh, you know, it was <laughs> like, you don't want to go on a college campus. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm 63 now. I'm j- enjoying my dotage. I'm working out a little. And I'm uh, reading wow, my apps out. Wow, working Miller. Yeah, Very I'm running. And, uh, I'm reading a lot. And uh, I sit there bemused by the news. But let's face facts. This country is as polarized at 63 as I've ever seen it. You've got to wonder every day if you want to get out and get in the, the middle of that because it is angry and it's nasty. Right. And I, I think it's Absolutely. moving towards dangerous, to be honest. But I saw those two guys. I think somebody's going to get hurt. <laughs> Andy, how much of a how much of a clamor do you think there is on college campuses for Dennis Miller? He says, "Oh, college camp. When was the nobody's calling him? There's not one college kid who can remember his name is calling Dennis Miller to come to their school." Unbelievable. So does he live in like Santa Barbara? What is he? Yeah, he lives scared in to Santa go Barbara. Out He's rich. To the coffee it shop, sounds to me like Dennis Miller is going to get hurt. Seriously depressed. <laughs> I mean, I I'm think sure. you're right. I think he's. I think he's suffering severe depression right now. Uh, Not and, hard well, to think, think of people, why. People don't realize how great he. You know, I thought he was pretty great back in the in the old days. So it's like a real kind of almost tragedy. Are you serious? Not really. <laughs> Well, he was okay with the black and white movie, wasn't it okay? Uh, that was the best ever. Did you, did you, did people are afraid to touch everything in the uh, the porno theater. <laughs> Is that one of the bits? Yeah, I just know that from that guy who uh, who uh, who critiqued our, the our appearance. Oh, that stand up thing. Yeah, what's yeah. that guy's name? What is that guy's name? Crazy Eddie. Yeah, uh, it's something that to guy? that effect. Uh, I'm a sucker <laughs> to feel bad for any uh, almost anyone. Some of the worst people in the world. You just say that because he's from Pittsburgh. No, no, but I'm saying I don't feel bad if he's depressed. I don't care at all. <laughs> Like, he's a terrible he's, I have he's a terrible, terrible, terrible human for, being and empathy for Kelly a lot of people Kelly will defend but... just about anybody I know, I don't feel except for Dennis Miller. Miller he's terrible oh boy well, let it... me hear your Hitler defense <laughs> <laughs> there, there is look one. he had problems <laughs> but look he had a lot of energy very tough childhood he, he, had, a very, he had a very he, tough childhood he got hurt in World War I have a little empathy. You know, he didn't really want to have that mustache. It's just that he couldn't grow a full one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, uh, everybody blames him, but it was just the shape of his facial hair. Andy. Yeah, so they sh- yeah. <laughs> time to go, right? It's time to go. Get the hell out of here, right? Oh, my God. Uh, it's so great to talk to you. Oh, but Sam, one thing to remember, to, to, to bounce out of that thing you just played, I, I still think Corolla and uh, Dennis Prager are going to the campuses for their show. So I, I, we have to watch, we have to get uh, clips of that whenever that starts. Prager fake you. Um, <laughs> and they go and with, with, with Ace, with we, Adam Corolla. Ace. We need people gonna... to send us clips of Prager and Corolla. 
Uh, because I just don't know if Dennis Miller is going to do this very much longer. It sounds like, I mean, I get a little worried I hear that. In in the uh, podcast clip, uh, it's also a video podcast, but Ugh. Miller won't send video. So O'Reilly always mention, makes a joke about how Dennis Miller's in his pajamas. And, and it's probably true, actually. <laughs> I think if I think if he's in his pajamas, that's probably an an upgrade. I think it's very possible. <laughs> I think even putting on he sounds like putting on pajamas would be too hard for him at this point. He's so and he calls other he goes, You want you don't want to go outside because everybody's so angry. <laughs> he thinks people are angry. <laughs> and I thought I had a problem with Gervais. I thought I had a problem with Gervais. This guy really needs some anger management or he should see the movie. Anger management with uh, Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholson. <laughs> we should do that. We should just pipe it into his house constantly. Andy Kindler, thank you so much. I love buddy. you. All right, I love you too, buddy. Bye. I love you guys. Have a great weekend, and don't forget, uh, Shavuos is coming up. Is that right? No. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> I, I love you guys. Bye. Take care, man. All right, folks. And yes, another freebie Friday is over, and we move into the fun half of the program. Oh, Matt thought he could just roll it up. <laughs> Matt thought he could just... Seems just, like people are just, like, walking out of the studio and... Yeah. We're just watching TV and <laughs> talking to Annie Kimler. Maybe the show is over. Uh, Rex Tillerson is uh, claiming that Donald Trump pressed Putin on election hacks. And Russia says that Trump accepted Putin's denials. Um, I pressed him. They denied. I accepted it. You hacked. Uh, you uh, tried to enter our election, uh, state election things. No, didn't. Okay. Okay. Don't put out the P tape, please. I beg you. No P tape. No P tape. All right, folks. Don't forget, you can support this program by becoming a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. JoinTheMajorityReport.com. Go there, and you can join the majorityreport.com. Also, JustCoffee.com, fair trade coffee, tea, or chocolate. Use the coupon code MAJORITY, get 10% off. And if you buy your crap from Amazon or Jet.com, please do so via our links at MajorityReportKickback.com. Oh, and just I uh, should tell you, if you're a member and you haven't gotten the, um, the link to uh, the behind-the-scenes video. We had a lot of people. Was, I don't know if the email went into their spam account, but we're going to send another email this afternoon. Keep an eye out from it. It's from Sam at the Majority Report. And then uh, Monday or Tuesday, uh, we'll figure out a way of putting it on the, um, uh, on the site uh, so members only can see it. All right. See you in the fun half. 646-257-3920. She said no, no.